What's up everyone and welcome to Wednesday's episode of Reptile News. I want to take this time real quick to tell you subscribe if you like the content that I've been putting out. It really helps every single subscription, every single like, every single share really helps. So if you haven't done any of that stuff lately, do it for me please. And we're going to start off today with a story about frogs. I know we don't talk about frogs very much, but I wanted to talk about them today because I found this story floating around the internet about evolving toxins likely to make frogs, more frogs, go extinct. And while I always talk about all this science mumbo jumbo and how I don't really understand how a lot of it works. I'm not a scientist, I'm just a common peasant really. I found this not too dissimilar than those, but at the same time very interesting. And they go with the predator-prey aspect, and they call the frog the predator, I'm sorry, the prey, and the toxin the predator. And imagine prey learning and or evolving to get away from its predator. And therefore the predator to survive has to learn and or evolve to get at its prey. And that's pretty much what they're getting at with this article is the toxins are having to, the frogs are having to evolve to fight these toxins and the toxins are having to evolve to continue getting their prey. It's a real interesting story. It's kind of a long read, so I recommend if you got a few minutes and you really like reading about this sciencey type stuff to click that link down in the description below and check it out. It might also be a good time to mention that I'm using a different audio on this. I'm, as you see, I'm not wearing my microphone and I want to give this a shot because obviously my studio here, which I always used to film in, that I have haven't done much lately has much different octaves I guess if you will the tones a lot different and I'm wondering what you guys think do you like the wired ugh, the wireless microphone do you like the this is the sound coming right from the camera right here let me know in the comments down below now we're gonna move on to Florida where a 62 year old snorkelers body was found they believe he was the victim of a 12-foot crocodile which they later killed of course officials are saying there's too early to know whether the alligator was involved pending the autopsy but they did get reports of the gator in the area and that it was aggressive. And I have a huge problem with this story. I, I, more than likely for the same reason that you guys probably have a huge problem with this story. The shoot first and ask questions later. Now I am semi sympathetic to authorities having to, uh, what do I say, extinguish an animal um, that's become a nuisance. Even though I don't agree with it, I believe we are the nuisance. I could almost understand the way of thinking. But to absolutely go out and kill something, assuming it might have had something to do with the death of a person, not knowing yet if it did, really just doesn't sit right with me. And I really hope that sometime in my lifetime I see us change our ways and stop doing stuff like that. Now this next story, i almost contemplating not talking about it because of the lack of information, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Apparently there's a fire on 29 Grand Street in Danbury where nobody was hurt, just short of a firefighter, but it's believed that a few reptiles perished in the fire. And while they don't say what kind of reptiles they were, whether these were breeders, keepers, they do say a few, so it's probably not breeders. I think it's probably a halfway decent time to, to mention most of us have a fire plan to get out of our homes in case of a fire, flood, tornado, emergency, or whatever but all too often the pets in that house are overlooked. And I'm not talking only reptiles. I am particularly fond of the reptile um, topic because that's what I have, but I also have a dog as well as a chicken. And it's just important to think about them all. And while I'd hate to recommend releasing something, it's so much better than having it burn up in a fire. We've heard this all too often the last couple of years within our own community. Um, I can't name them off the top of my head, but I can think of remembering talking about a couple breeding facilities that caught fire where hundreds if not thousands of animals were lost and like I said it's just important to have a game plan in place to get those animals out of the house and away from danger. And now we're going to talk about smuggling and a little story from the Cambodia Daily where apparently a man tried to smuggle turtles, snakes, and whatnot into Vietnam. The man was stopped at a checkpoint after a tip was given that he might be carrying illegal snakes. He tried to hide the illegal snakes underneath rats. He had two baskets on his motorcycle as well as a compartment underneath the seat. Unfortunately, the man fled into a cornfield and got away from authorities. But fortunately, all the animals were turned over to Wildlife Alliance, a conservation group. And that's where I'm going to end today's show. If you'd like to read any more about these stories, that link's right down below here in the description. And as always, if you're still watching, my name is Jason White. Now you know what's going on in the reptile world. Be good to each other and we'll see you Friday.